God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. Welcome to another Divine Insight Ministries session. It is a Friday, 12 noon, Central Standard Time, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. God bless everybody. And it's always me and my wife, like to take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all that you do and how you support this ministry. So thank you. And as always, we ask you to hit that share button, share this on your page. Good to see you, Sheila. Good to see you, Sister Tammy. Good to see everybody. Sister Brittany, God bless you. God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Go ahead, hit that share button, share this on your page. Also, invite as many people out. Hit that invite button. You can do that. Good to see you, Brother Lamont, man. What's going on with you, man? Miss you, man, so much. God bless you. Brother Brian, God bless you. Brother Leonard, God bless you. Sister Brown, God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button, share this on your page. Also, hit that invite button. Invite as many people out. And if the Lord lays on your heart, do a watch party for us. That really helps us a lot. Hit them thumbs, them hearts. Keep them coming all during the ministry. That helps Facebook regulate exactly what we're doing and how the activity is going on the page. Good to see you, Sister Crystal. Good to see everybody. Don't forget to go to YouTube. Sister Payne, God bless you. I'm going to try to call you this week uh, so we can spend some time and talk. But um, go to YouTube and watch the videos. Please do that consistently. YouTube, hit that notification button. Visit our D uh, Divine Insight Ministry Facebook page as well. Please visit all that. We are on uh, Instagram. We're on all the sites. And so please do that. Also, we have a website, www.divineinsightministry.net. So please do that as well. But God bless everybody. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, we're talking about how to understand and transform uh, the enemies of divine connections. Anytime God connects you with anybody <clears throat> that you know there's a divine connection, you got to know how to make sure that the enemies of that connection don't win, okay? Anytime you are co connected to somebody, brother to brother, uh, brother to pastor, leader, mother, father, brother, sisters, whatever it may be, whenever you have a divine connection, there are enemies that fight to make sure that you don't make that connection. And so we've been talking about how to deal with those things that could break up powerful covenant relationships, okay? And so, like Brother Champ, uh, I met him years ago out of Buffalo, New York, and we've been divinely connected for years. And so we do all that we can to stay connected and, and we know how to uh, receive from one another, and that's so important. So I've been talking about that, but today I'm talking about the, the, probably the most two most powerful things that the devil used to break up any relationship or any divine covenant, whether you are a pastor, whether it's the praise team, whether it's your ministry staff, there are two things that the devil used to me the most, the most difficulties that you would have in staying connected to anything God has connected you to will be how do you handle the spirit of lying? People lie. Saints lie more than anybody that I know. Uh, lying and pride, okay, which I could have put a third one in, which is the ego, but pride works out of the ego, edging God out, E-G-O. And so these things you have to know how to deal with, okay, and you're not exempt because you meet a person that you're connected to. You may meet the perfect person brother or sister or leadership or church, you still gonna have to face how to deal with these mindsets that show up in your relationship or show up in the covenant. So I'm gonna, I've been teaching on this. And so please go back and watch the other videos. This is part nine today. And so there's eight series already out or eight episodes already out dealing with how to stay connected when God divinely put you together. Good to see you, brother Michael. May I love you so much. And so that's so important. So we're going to begin to teach on that. The spirit of lying and the pride. Pride that I, I'm telling you that pride will, will do something to you and everybody has to fight it. I don't care who you are. I don't care how powerful you are. I don't care how much you pray, how much you intercede, how much you speak in tongues. I'm telling you, you're going to have to fight that pride every single day. It's a part of the laws of the flesh. There's laws of the flesh that's going to fight you. They are enmity against God and, and the Holy Spirit is enmity against them. And so there's a battle within you just to maintain your spiritual position in God, just to maintain it, okay? Just alone. Every time you rise up to a greater level in God, you have also risen the greater level of the battle. You know that? Just, just when you make a decision, I'm going to pray more, you increase your battle just by thinking that, just by believing that. Because the laws of the flesh works works automatically against that very move of the spirit. And so let's get ready for that. Father, we thank you. 
uh, today. I hear a powerful teaching. So Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're going to give us. And I, I, I believe God, I can feel it in my spirit. There's an okay in my spirit. There's a confirming in my spirit that yokes are going to be broke today. People are going to have a greater understanding of how to fight this battle. You've already started speaking to us. And so we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, teach us and guide us. Lead us into all truth. Oh God, we bless you for it. Thank you, Lord, for being our lover of our soul. Thank you, Lord, for being the author and the finisher of our faith. Somebody needs to know that you started it, you will finish it. And God, we bless you for it. Holy Spirit, have your way. Wisdom, we're listening. And God, we thank you for the confirmation of this word and this teaching. We thank you for every divine connection that you have connected us to, every joint supply, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. And God, we bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So God bless you, God bless you. Go ahead, hit that, <coughs> hit that share button. Share this on your page. I'm excited about what God is going to do today. And so we're going to get right into it. Uh, and we just thank you for coming. Thank you for all those who are believing in the principle of sowing where you're going. And we thank you for all the levels of sowing that you do. Okay. All the levels of sowing that you do. We thank you for that. Good afternoon, Sister Baker. God bless you. Okay. Point number one. Point number one for today. Lying and pride brings the highest forms of disconnection. Lying and pride brings the highest forms of disconnection, okay? I want you to understand that. Lying and pride bring the highest form of disconnection. My wife is not here right now, and so if you be in lab, please take notes for us and post those notes on uh, until my wife comes. Okay, so point number one, lying and pride brings the highest form of disconnection. If you are a person, and yesterday I talked about it, if, if you didn't watch yesterday's, go back and watch it. If you are struggling with a lying spirit, if you find yourself lying about a lot of things, you love God, you want to worship God, you want to grow, but you notice that you've been telling a whole lot of lies. And that is a good observation. Thank you for sowing. We're sowing where we're going. And so that's a good observation. And, and, and don't think that you're exempt from it because none of us are. Okay, but if you find yourself, watch that, that you lie a lot. And so yesterday I talked about why people lie. There is a logical, there is a philosophical, there is a true psychological understanding of the spirit lying. Okay, and, and what platform that it looks for to be able to be embraced. The spirit of lying looks for a room in your life. And if you are suffering certain things, lying will become your choice. It will become your choice. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about it, about it today. But if that's you, I want you to understand that it's going to be very difficult for people to really connect and give a download to you when you're carrying that spirit. And so you got to start fighting. There are things about ourselves that we have to be honest and we have to say, I don't want to be that way. God didn't choose me to be that way. And I'm going to fight against myself. Thank you for putting the notes down, Sister Willis. And so, and so I'm going to fight against myself because I know that's not the way God created me to be. You got to be honest, okay? So lying, thank you, Sister Payne. Lying and pride brings about the greatest disconnection. There are some powerful people that, that we have not been able to connect to because of their lying spirit. It's hard to trust them. It's hard to depend upon them. It's hard to believe what they're saying. And even though they have the goods, the devil loves to pick people that God has chosen and bring them with a issue so that their issue causes an issue between me and you. And so now we can't use them in the game. The devil hoping that the Michael Jordans of the, of the spirituality never get used in the game because he will use certain things that divide us, that disconnect us. And lying is a powerful disconnector. There are mothers who have disconnected from their sons, uh, daughter, daughters from their mothers, fathers from their sons, brothers from brothers because of the lying spirit. And so this is very key. It is a powerful disconnector. And not only lying, but pride. There are some people who are going to talk about the power of pride, what it looks for, what does it need to operate, how is pride few, like what's the gasoline for pride. Good to see you, Blair, man. Love you so much. And so you have to understand that if you're carrying a prideful spirit, if you're carrying a lying spirit, if these two spirits 
wants you to be independent of anybody else so it can destroy you by yourself. When you carry the spirit of pride in line, you carry internal burdens privately that people probably don't know about. All they know is that they don't want to deal with you. They don't want to be bothered with you. Good to see you, Poppy. Man, been praying for you, man. Man, I miss talking to you, man. And please call me when you get a chance. And so it's so important that when you're dealing with pride and you're dealing with an aligned spirit, it will isolate you and the brothers that you need, the sisters that you need, you won't be able to connect to them because pride will have you pull it away. It'll have you see that nobody's worthy of who you are, all these things because it becomes a it becomes a private meeting. It becomes a, a private uh, uh, evaluation of your life and he tells you, pride tells you, this is what you need to do. And so what happens is you find yourself isolated. You find yourself not being able to be connected. And if you are connected in a lying spirit or with pride, then what happens is you're building a house upon sand. And so only reason why you're thinking that you'll have a connection is because you tell a lie on top of a lie. Or you have to control the situation. You have to be the smartest room, smartest person in the room. You have to dominate. It has to be your way because you're prideful. It has to be all about you. And so even if you have a connection, it's a false connection. In the minute that pressure comes, life comes, the thing you built because you built it off of a lie, it doesn't stand. Because you built it off of pride, you find yourself by yourself. Okay? And so this is very key. And so point number one, lying and pride brings the highest forms of disconnection. And the enemy, when he don't want you to be valuable as a team member, when he don't want you, watch this, to be valuable with a connection, with a family, he will, the spirit of pride and lying will visit you to break up the union between you and your wife, to break up the union between the son and the father, the daughter and the mother. It is the greatest tools that the enemy used to bring disconnection is the spirit of lying and pride. Okay? You see, I'm still suffering with a little cold. It's not Corona. <laughs> okay. It's so, it's so bad now. You can't even believe you got a cold. You got to have Corona. That's the spirit of fear. Don't believe it. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two. When you ha have received the spirit of lying or operating out of your flesh, because all of these are nothing but manifestations of the flesh. This is how the flesh works. The Bible says the works of the flesh are these. And it names lying, adultery, fornication. It names witchcraft. So all these things are nothing but works of the flesh. They are works of the flesh. Okay. So point number two. Lying, watch this, looks for or believe in protection. Lion believes in the spirit of lion, believes in protection. If you're just coming on, hit that share button. Please do that. Hit that share button for me. Okay? And invite as many people out as you can. But lion believes in protection. So we're going to talk about the psychological information of lying and why it seems to be necessary. We're going to try to have some compassion on those who are a victim of this mindset. And so I told you, the only way you can unlock a person from anything is to understand their bondage. Many times we can't set people free because you're so busy judging them and criticizing them, you don't understand the level of their captivity. If you can unlock it, you can unlock people from it. If you can understand the mechanics of it, once you understand how something works, then you can work what you understand. Then that's why the Bible says, in all that getting, get a understanding if it costs you all. Because understanding is the key to it, okay? So let's get an understanding of why people lie. People that we need. Now remember, the whole purpose is, I need you, my brother. I need you, my sister. I need these people in my life. But if there are an enemy, if there are enemies that is coming against our connection, I have to know what to do to the enemies so that me and my brother and me and my sister can be connected. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. I will not be able to be connected to who I need. You carry my medicine. I carry yours. We must make the exchange 
But if we don't deal with the things that makes me feel like I don't need you or I don't want you or I'm tired of you, then I will never be able to be connected to the medicine that you carry. Okay, so it's important that we identify the enemies that are separating us, the enemies that are causing a disconnection when we know by God's spirit that we've been designed to work together. Okay, I believe the day that God is going to give many of you a revelation of why you need your brother, your sister. And there are some things you got to fight within yourself so that you can stay connected. If you don't deal with your lying, then you'll never be able to be connected as you should. You don't deal with your pride, you'll always find yourself by yourself blaming everybody else. But when you start dealing with the things that are visiting you, that are not a part of you, then the connection becomes easier, okay? Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So lying for protection, it comes in two forms. The first form it comes in protection for others. People lie to protect other people. Now, we're going to deal with some real heavy and sensitive things in there. Good to see you, Evangelist. Trina, God bless you. We're going to deal with some heavy things because in the body of Christ, sometimes you don't have connection with your daughter, but she's trying to protect somebody, mama. Sometimes you don't have connection with your son, daddy, but he's trying to protect somebody. And people will lie because they believe that lying protects people, that the truth will cause people to be in trouble. This is very key. A lot of times there is a demonic spirit in your family, but your family has been carrying lies because they believe they have to protect the name of the family. They have to protect the reputation of the family. They have to protect certain people in the family. And so there's a spirit of lying. And when the spirit of lying comes in, watch this, it, it, it seems to protect something. But, but many of you, you are experiencing that there is something about our family that we're not as close as we need to be. Sometimes, sometimes you, you notice that something different about my son, something different about my daughter, something different about my wife, something different about my husband, but maybe he's lying and you can sense it. You can, you can feel it. You can discern it. But he won't be honest with you. He won't tell the truth. And you'll say, did something happen? Did this happen to you? Uh, did this happen to you? What happened over there? And they won't tell you the truth. And what happens is you can't connect to them. And ever since then, y'all... Y'all may be in the same room, but you're four feet apart. You, you're practicing physical distance. And why are you physically distance or social distance? Which really, that's not what we're doing. Really, we're really now practicing physical distances, even though they call it social, because we're still socializing. We're just not physically socializing. But a lot of times, that's the case in the family, because they try to protect something. And we got to deal with the, the severity and, and the realness of what I don't want to happen if the truth comes out or what I am afraid of if the truth comes out. Now, what we don't deal with a lot of times that we feel okay because I'm not going to expose so-and-so. I'm not going to tell on so-and-so. I'm not a snitch. Uh, 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 let's just get over it. All those things. But what, we, what we're not aware of, good to see you, Mr. Kimberly, God bless you. What we're not aware of is that there is a disconnection because of the protection. Anytime there is protection, then there is a lack of connection because you build a wall, okay? So let's talk about it. So the first form of protection that lion does, and lion does, lion tells you to protect. And so you need to understand that why you can't connect, why you can't connect to your pastor, why you can't connect to your church, because they're trying to protect something, okay? And I told you, two things that we do when we're dealing with things, we either protect it or we share it. You have to make a decision in your life. Am I going to share what I'm going through or am I going to protect what I have been through? Am I going to share it? Am I going to share my life, share my emotions, share my experiences, share my failure? Or am I going to protect my feelings, protect my failures, protect my proclivities, protect my experiences by not telling them, by building a wall? And if I got a lie to do it, many people have chose to lie rather than tell the truth and to bring about a healthy connection. Okay? Okay? And so many people believe in it. And, and don't be critical because I, I guarantee you, in your life, 
when certain things happen to you or certain things happen to other people, you lie to protect them. Because until you get mature enough to know the importance of a connection, until you get mature enough to know the importance of the revelation of the relationship, you lie to protect, okay? So two forms, people lie to protect others and people lie to protect themselves, okay? They lie to protect others. Good to see you, Sister, Sister Cindy Mo. God bless you. They lie to protect others or they lie to protect themselves. The number one reason why people lie is to protect others. So I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some real sensitive intercessors. I need you to be in prayer. I need you to be in prayer. Okay. Very key. Because I'm going to say some things. We're going to open up a can of worms today. But we, we're going to believe God to bring about healing and deliverance and fulfillment at the same time. Okay. You could have been molested by your father, by your uncle, by your cousin, and you have never told the truth of what happened. You have never revealed who it was. You tried to protect that person. You didn't want your daddy to kill that person. You didn't want your mama to kill that person. And so you've been carrying, watch this, insecurities about yourself. You got feelings about yourself from that touch that you question your beauty. I can feel your tears already. You, 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 you got questions about, uh, am I ever covered? Is there something wrong with me? Am I safe? And so that illegal touch that you experience from being molested is still in your life. It is, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It is, uh, it is it's trying to grab roots. It's building a philosophy in your mind. It's building a way of thinking. You are learning how to build walls to suppress these feelings. You're trying to wash off the memory of the act. You're, 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 you're beginning to formulate meanings in your mind with multi voices about why it happened, or uh, what you should have did, could have did to stop it. But when you were questioned, and when you was, uh, some things will begin to stick their head up. You did not want the person that victimized you to experience any type of punishment or any type of judgment. So you protect them and you protect them by lying that it didn't happen. And because you lie, watch this, the, the frequency of lying release chemicals that even justify the reasonings that you're building up within your own mind that are absolutely wrong about yourself. And you don't even know that you're building an army, not armor. God says put on the armor of God. Most of the time we don't put on armor, we build armies, thinking mechanisms, people that represent mindsets or mindsets that represent people. In this army of collective thoughts, you built upon the lie, the feelings, the, the, the questions that you won't let nobody answer. You don't have the answer for. And so now there's a disconnection in you. You only get close to a certain, or you only can get, uh, uh, you only can get so close to people. You only can get so close to things. Uh, uh, you, things can't touch you real deep anymore. You're afraid of a deep touch. You're afraid of vulnerability. And so because you're afraid of vulnerability, love is a struggle for you at an intimate level. Love is a struggle for you in total comp confidence. Love is a struggle for you in, in total trust because you had to protect yourself or protect the other person that victimized you. And so you lied about it and you lie and then lie and lie to the point that you don't even remember. But there is a feeling that's boiling up in you. For years, and, and then when, when you finally meet somebody or you get connected to something that you really want to give your all to, you notice that you can't go beyond a certain point because you have built a wall of protection and that you're afraid if I talk about it. And so many times people, they'll carry this type of thing for 15 years of their life and then they may be 30, 40, 50 years old. And then they finally tell their mama what happened. Or they finally tell what happened. 
And that per sometimes you wait for that person to die before you say th that he did it or that you experience it. All these things going. And so we going around here trying to connect to our children, trying to connect to our sons, trying to connect to our daughter. But there's already been a disconnection in our lives and we've been lying about. And you'd be surprised at the people who've been lying about things that happened to them in their lives. That they can't make a connection. Can't make a connection to really, are you a man? Because you got touched by a man, and so you've been questioning that. And so there's certain things in your manhood that you don't let touch you. And you become, you can become homophobic because you've been touched. So brother, brother, I, I don't like all that hugging. I don't like all that hugging. Something happened. But because, and if I say, well, what's wrong with But what, why can't I hug you, brother? I, I ain't trying to get with you. Well, no, I'm, I'm a real man. When you're a real man and can't get a hug, or something happened and you lie and you build lies upon lies upon lies. This is the greatest way that the enemy keeps us disconnected. Yes, disconnected. And they never get connected. And some some women never get connected. And so your husband been married to you 15 years, but he know there's a place in your life, there's a room in your life that he is not allowed to go into. And you're not honest about what really went on and all the things that went on. Because we protect people. So a lot of people, so uncle has been protected. Pastor has been protected. There are things that went on in church. And you know it went on in church. You may have been a victim of it, but you've been lying about it. And so if you've been lying about it, so you can't get no help. That person is being protected. And we are protected people. It's no different than when David had Bathsheba husband killed. That was his nephew. Okay? That was a family member that David had had over his army. And and and, and he knew about he knew about that when David wrote on that letter. To have him, watch this, to go to the front of the line. He knew about David wanting Bathsheba. He knew about it, but 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 he kept it a secret. See what I'm saying? He was not honest with it. Even David lied about his own sin. The prophet had to give it to him in a riddle. See, we live lies. We live in a level of isolation and protecting. And so who are you protecting? What bishop are you protecting that even though you were designed to connect to him, to help him with his problem, you chose to lie about his problem. You won't tell the truth. You won't call it. Your Holy Ghost showed you some things. The Spirit showed you some things, but you're not willing to deal with it. And so what happens is your covering, what's this, is allowing roots to take their is to take root, and because roots are growing, it's gonna be hard to pull that tree down. Okay, am I talking to you? I'm making sense. So they protect others. Okay, why they protect others? Now let's deal with some wires. If anything that we're dealing with, uh, talking about, and I feel the anointing. Hit that share button. When you're talking about divine connections, we got to deal with the enemies because there is a woman that needs you. But you got to help her see that she don't need to lie. That's why I talked about yesterday. You got you cannot create an environment that allows people to lie in. You cannot build expectations that they're afraid to tell you the truth. You got to be able to handle the truth. You can't walk away from people, run away from people, kill people, have a hammer in your hand while they're talking to you because they'll never tell you the truth. And you're helping their captivity remain because you don't build an atmosphere that say, whatever you tell me, nothing is going to change by the way I love you. You have to be. You have to build an atmosphere that says, whatever you share with me, I'm going to do everything I have to get you free from that. Not make you feel bad because you're in it. Okay? Real talk. A lot of young boys who end up being homosexuals, if they could have told you who did it. So a whole lot of choir directors that molested boys. whole lot of pastors molested boys. whole lot of stuff went on in the church basement. whole lot of stuff went on at those, at those conventions. And they're covering. Like right now, there's a whole lot of people who are messed up in the music industry, but they got messed up by the fathers of the music industry that turned them out. Whole lot of preachers introduced crack cocaine to other preachers. And so they struck out on crack cocaine because another pastor was getting high while he was pastoring. And they cover one another. We got cliques in the church that cover one another with these lies. When you say he's anointed, he's Holy Ghost sealed. He lived the life of God. And you know he ain't living the life of God. You know his life is not in order. You know he's abusing his wife. Whole lot of pastors abusing their wife verbally and physically. And God revealed it to you, but you cover them. You see, and we got to talk about that. And there is a right covering, but not a covering that keeps you in bondage. When the Bible says love covers a multitude of folk, 
It's not covering it to hide it. It was covering it to protect it from a, a bacteria. Why you're being covered is being worked on. Growth is increasing so that when it be uncovered and the wind hits it, it can totally heal. We're not covering people. We're hiding people. And there's a difference. And see, we had to deal with that. Because what happens is, there's not a connection. And what you need from me, I never got it. I never got it. What you, what you, what, what I need from you, I never got it. You never got it. Why? Because there's some things we're lying about that doesn't allow the connection to completely take, the click never happened. It never clicked. Never clicked. Okay? Very, very, very key. And so let's talk about why people lie. Well, they lie to protect others. Also, they lie because they don't want to tell the truth that may hurt your feelings. Now, let's talk about truth that hurts feelings. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword, okay? Because we may say, okay, let's tell the truth. Let's say stop lying. Okay, if I tell you the truth, can you handle the level of truth? See? I'm a person, I'm very transparent, and I put my life, I make, my life is an open book, and, 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 and many preachers, they're not willing to do that. They haven't felt safe enough to do that. My walk with God as an individual, the one-on-one -on -one time with God, let me know that if God loves me, then I'm okay with the whole world being against me. Mm -hmm. I have become confident enough in God's love enough that I don't need man's approval along with God to be okay. And so because of that, if he knows my nakedness and he's the only one that can put me in heaven or hell, I've learned to be okay with that level of knowledge. A lot of people, you're not okay with God. That's why you are trying, watch this, to hide from people which you can't hide from God because you're not comfortable with God's approval being enough. Okay? Very key. And so, and so in that, a lot of times we have to deal with the atmosphere. So we have a responsibility as the receiving end of the people who are lying. We have a responsibility to always be in the form of love and light. We see truth from how God sees them. That's the lens of light. Two lenses and the glasses. First lens is the lens of light. Let there be light. Second lens is the lens of love for God so loved the world. Two lenses, these are the two pillars of divine insight ministry is built off of the lens of light and the lens of love. That's how we see everything. Okay, watch this. I must come to you when I notice that there is something holding you in captivity, something you're lying about. We'll get to the pride in a minute. I got to create an atmosphere that's so loving that you will feel comfortable Take it off your clothes before you take them off. There is a presence. And this is what I've been praying about a whole lot. Like I've been in, in some real deep prayer in the last two weeks. Just constantly by myself, walking through the house, being in prayer. Because I know God wants to fill me up with a presence. God wants to trust me with a level of trouble. That the very presence, when they walk up on me, that it breaks. And they will begin, this is what God told me. I'm going to give you a presence. There's so much me that when people walk up on you, they're going to start crying. Yes, God. It's going to break things in their life. I'm giving you a yoke breaking anointing that comes from the peace of God. Yes, God. When you rest in God's peace, there's a presence that lives with you that when people walk up on you, they can breathe. Is oxygen for their spirit. And they're going to break and cry. They're going to ask questions. They're going to begin to confess. Just like when Jesus went home with Zacchaeus. He said, come down from the tree, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, I got to go home with you. The minute he goes home with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus says to him, Lord, I've been robbing the people. I'm going to give them back all the money I took three times greater. Jesus never brought it up, but the level of intimacy brings the level of honesty. When you are, have true intimacy, honesty will be released. 
And so because he felt the love of God and the peace of God, he began to cry in repentance and begin to change his action. This is what God is doing. You must create that because to see a liar in the kingdom, to see somebody with the spirit of pride, but you are so prideful, you haven't positioned yourself to be a help to them. Because you're so prideful, you haven't prayed when God told you to pray. And so now you don't carry the temperature of the atmosphere so that the breakthrough could come. Okay? You've got to have that. When that comes, people got to be able to deal with the level of freedom so that they don't feel like what I'm about to tell you going to hurt your feelings. Because a lot of times people can't tell the truth because they're protecting your feelings. People lie in the kingdom. Because they're protecting your feelings. Now, we've been raised to be liars in the church. It is a doctrine that we, it is an invisible doctrine that we teach and don't even know we teach it. I'll give you a, 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 a example. A young lady may get to the mic, special guest come, goes to the mic to sing a song, pass a water to sing, maybe she's a niece or whatever the case may be. And she's terrible. Here we go. We clapping. We go ahead, girl. Let him use you. Woo! All this craziness, knowing that it doesn't sound right. Now, should we should we be silent to her? Should we be rude? Absolutely not. But should we have a love enough for her to make an investment? We can make an investment. We can pray, intercede for God to show her. Because maybe she's struggling and she's trying to use singing as a hiding mechanism. It's obvious that's not her calling. She does have a calling. We should, God let us see that so we can intercede and pray. Let's say she is called, she needs training. Are we willing to pray, Lord, send, if it's not me, send a financial person that can bless her to have lessons. But we do not want her to think that she can hide behind, watch this, applause that is not true because she will be raised to think I, I will earn your applause whether I have it or not. And so what happens is she learning to watch this, enjoy lying that makes her feel good. And many times we lie to people that make them feel good. And so what happens now, when it needs to be told true, she's 35 years old, she still is not a singer, she doesn't sing well at all, but now she wants to know, mama, tell me the truth, do you really think I can really sing? I've been singing all my life, and, and, and mama don't want her daughter's uh, feelings. So you keep her in captivity. Now, if you do it with singing, what else will you do it with? What else do you don't want to tell the truth to? I'm talking to you. Because the Lord just pointed you out. You've been wondering why you and your children don't have a connection. But there are things that you haven't been honest about. Do you know how many times we on the phone and we don't tell the truth to people that we see in bondage? Because we don't want to hurt their feelings. And because we don't want to hurt their feelings. Or the person who is lying don't want to hurt your feelings. I lied to you, mama, because you have an expectation of me that I cannot feel. Never wanted to feel it. Never wanted to be the person you wanted me to be. But I didn't want to make you unhappy, mama. So I lied to you. I lied to you. So I thought you loved church. My mama never loved church. I went to church because you wanted me to go to church. And then when I tell you the truth, how I really feel about the church, mama's going to hurt your feelings. Daddy is going to hurt your feelings. I never wanted to play football. You was the football player. But you wanted me to be. That goes again. It's the same thing in the movie with the Clark sisters. I don't want to hurt mama's feelings. But when I get older, all of a sudden I got to tell mama the truth. And when I tell mama the truth, mama, I needed a mama. But you needed an organ player. Uh-oh. Mama got knocked down. Mama got crushed. Because wait a minute, you telling me that you think I've been prostituting you since you've been nine? Yes, you have, mama. And I've been lying to you by going with you, acting like I enjoyed it. Not that I didn't enjoy it, but I got some things about my own life. But I didn't want to hurt mama's feelings. See? Woo! Truth is costly. Yes, it is. A whole lot of marriages don't know the truth. 
Whole lot of husbands don't know the truth. Whole lot of secrets in the house. Whole lot of things are in darkness. And when it's in darkness, the devil's sitting there laughing, saying, you know what? Until you cut the light on, I have access to this secret. And I'll use it as a way to get you. And I'll tell you how to treat your husband and what to do and what not to do. And there's certain things that the environment may come up for the truth. You can be talking to a person and I can see the light wanting to get in that room. But the light is saying they don't want to tell the truth. And they'll run all around and change the conversation. Because, because of, of pain, hurt, don't want to hurt their feelings. All these different things. Because lying does what? It, it, the philosophy of lying says, protect that person's feelings. It goes into all kind of things, okay? So to hurt their feelings. Another point is expectations. It's a bad thing when we cause people to be liars or they choose to embrace the spirit of lying because of expectations that was put on them. Expectations. Why is your feelings hurt? Because this is how I wanted you to think. This is how I wanted you to act. And I put that expectation on you and don't disappoint me. So, so you're, trying to, you're trying to feel my expectations. A whole lot of people, you, you made your daughter a nurse. That's what you wanted to be. And you try to live your dreams through your kids. You can't live your dreams through your kids. And so now you say, why did you lie to me? I spent all that money sending you to college. Because you had that expectation of me. I'm, a, I'm not going to college because you, because I want to go to college. You want me to go to college. It builds a lion. And then you want to you wanna get mad and say they lied when you create an atmosphere for the lie. Because you couldn't handle the truth because you wouldn't take down your expectations. We don't take down our expectations. I remember, and I was just talking to this, this a friend of mine the other day, and I was bringing up this, what I'm about to tell you, I was bringing up to him. When I was in Charlotte, I had a friend, and and this is this is something I used to deal with. I used to lie all the time in the area that I'm telling you about, because I always wanted people to believe that I'm a great friend, in which I am. But a lot of times, my friendship cost me being out of order. I'll give you an example. One particular friend, and this is very common for me. God had to heal me of this. He was teaching at a place. And so I believe in supporting people. If you doing something, Robert Jenkins wants to support you. But there's times that I should not support you because I need to be taking care of my wife or washing clothes or doing dishes or cutting the grass. See, but my needs and want to have friends will have me put myself second place so that you can see me in a certain way. I used to struggle with this. They call it a man pleaser. And so I remember him having to teach at a Bible study. And he said, man, I got to teach tonight. You going to come? First thing I said was, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to be there. You know, I'm going to be there for you. I really wanted to be there. But when I got off the phone, I looked around in my room. It bothers me. A clean house is a priority for me. My wife will tell you, when I wake up, probably the first thing I do after I talk to God is clean. I'm going to wash the clothes. I'm going to get the, get some water ready for the floor. I'm going to do something because... It's essential for my thinking. Okay, so very key. I even hear God tell me many times, he'll say, we're not going to talk in a dirty kitchen. I can hear the Lord tell me that. We're not going to talk in a dirty kitchen. I'm not talking to you in chaos. Right, so watch this. So when I said that, good to see you, Lester. God bless you, man. I love you so much. Good to see you, Captain Force. Hit that share button. So when I said to my friend, he said, yeah, man, I'm teaching today. I said, yeah, man, I'm going to be there. Good to see you, brother Lonnie. Love you, man. He said, man, I said, I'm going to be there. But when I looked around, I needed clothes ironing. The, my house needed cleaning. I was by myself at that time. And there's so many things I had to do. So I stayed home and I put things in order in my house. All right? That I had been putting off for at least a week. It was time to get the house together. I could hear the Lord say, there you go again. Trying to please somebody. Why couldn't you just tell him, no, man, I'm not able to come. I got some things I got to do first, and I'm not going to be able to be at this one. But I didn't want to take that chance of telling him that because I don't want to build my reputation that whenever he teach, Robert Jenkins is there for you. 
Robert Jenkins love you. He'll be there every time you preach, every time you play a ball game. Now, a lot of these things come from when I played all over the world and my daddy was not there for me. Not one big event in my whole entire life, and I've had thousands of them, has my father ever witnessed any one of them. The greatest events of my life, my dad has not witnessed not one of those at the day of that event. So because of that, support is very important to me. If my grandkids tell me they got a game, it bothers me if we don't go. I may never say it, but it bothers me because I know what it is to look out in the audience and see everybody else except who you recognize. I know that feeling. So because of that, it made me watch this, watch this, not be truthful to my confessions. I was loving you more than I'm loving me. I wrote a book. I got this another book I wrote. Got hundreds of them. One of the books I wrote, When Loving You Is Killing Me. When Loving You Is Killing Me. Okay? This happens. So what happens is I told him I'll be there. Well, I didn't show up because I stayed home and took care of priorities. Did what was I supposed to do? I took care of my own house first. Well, he called. And when he called that, that day, man, you always say you're going to be there. And if you if you say you're going to be there, your word should be your bond. So now my integrity is being questioned, which that's something I've always tried to defend because I wasn't raised by my daddy. So I never wanted me to feel, I never want nobody to ever say you be a man of your word because I fought my whole life to be a responsible man because I had to deal with the voices that said you would never be a man because you never had a man to show you how to be one. And so there's a whole lot of things that's going on in here. Are you hearing what's going on? Am I making sense to you? Hit that share button. Okay? Very key. And so when he said that, I said, man, listen, I'm a man of my word. I said, but I said, but I'm so afraid to tell you the truth. I'm so afraid to tell you the truth that if I tell you the truth, maybe you will see me different as you're saying you're doing it now. You're saying that, that you see me different now that as if I don't have any integrity. How many times have I showed up over your house? How many times when did nobody come? I came. Now I have to explain myself. Now I'm defending myself because I couldn't be truthful at that moment. Whoa. Now I'm being truthful because I'm being challenged. Are you hearing that? Okay. Very key. And so when I say, I said to him, listen, can I tell you I'm not going to make it and it don't change our relationship. Can I not call you uh, uh, every day? Can we not talk for weeks? And when we talk, I don't feel like you got a problem because, man, you ain't been calling me. Why are you calling me now? Or uh, All these different things. And see, a lot of times, it'll look like some soul ties is going on between man and man. Or some soul ties going on between women and women. Or some soul ties going on between you and your daughter. Or soul ties going on between you and your son. There's some soul ties going on with the ministry and, 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 and I mean, and, and, and the pastor. Oh yeah, there's some soul ties seem to be going on by the level of commitment that is made at the expense of lying, of not being true. I got my own husband to be with, Pastor. I can't be with you all the time. Real talk. But we rely on so many incidents for so many reasons. Insecurities, lack of confidence, lack of identity, all these things. So God had to help me. Listen, listen, you can't die at the, at the expense of trying to save everybody else. You got to be able to tell them the truth. And if they feel it's can't handle of that. Then you're going to talk about why can't you handle? Do you have expectations over me? Do you have expectations over me that is not fair to our friendship? Do you have expectations over me that's not fair to my me being your daughter? You should not control my life because you mama. You should not control my life because you daddy. You can't control my life because you bishop. See, we got to deal with that because you're making a lie out of me. Watch this. And you see me different. And now the real reason why we need to connect, we can't connect because there's some lying things that has showed up in the relationship. I know I'm prison today. Okay. Oh, so we got to keep it real. We got to keep it real. We got to keep it real. Okay? Because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Why is your feelings hurt? And so when people tell you the truth, because you don't want to see some things. One of my favorite songs by Marvin Winans that I love. And my granddaughter was singing it the other day. And I said, oh, you know that song? She's like, yeah, I know that song. But I love it. He said, you just don't want to know. Yeah. I cried so many nights. I shed so many tears. See? Real talk. Yep. I, I, I tried to deal with this thing. I tried to make it right. But I just didn't have the power. See? He, he, he's crying out on the soul. But what's time we miss it? 
But the real thing is people don't want to know what you're going through. They don't want to know why you're lying. They don't want to know why you're hurting. They just want to have an expectation over your life. They just want to have a level of control over your life. And if it, if it means kill you to make me happy, then make me happy at your funeral. But I'm going to put these expectations on you. And if you lie to for me to fulfill these expectations, then lie to yourself but make me happy. And it's crazy. That's what we do. And we never get the real oil from the relationship. We never get the fresh anointing from the relationship. We never get the real purpose why God put us together. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Because... People have expectations on you on both ends. I have expe ex expectation of you. You have an expectation of me that are not godly expectations. And because of that, we make lies out of our kids, out of our husbands, out of our wives, because we're not creating an atmosphere of love that says I can handle the truth. You can't come tonight. It's okay. You're not going to be able to support me on this one. Okay. It's okay. Nothing changed. You don't have to lie and say you're going to be there when you're not. You don't have to say you have it when you don't. You don't have to say you're on your way over when you know you're not coming. You know you're not coming. On my way, you're not on your way. You ain't even home. You don't even want me to know where you at. You in a whole nother town. Don't even know the Holy Ghost told me. Where you at? I know where you at. I can tell you where you at. Give your address where you at. But you're still lying about where you at. Because you don't want to make mama unhappy. You don't want to disappoint daddy. We know really what went on. No, what you told was a story you created. You really wasn't there when it happened. It happened somewhere else. But you said it happened here. It didn't happen here. Oh, see, when we start getting real prophetic, see, even prophets, God give you something and you trying to you trying to not be offensive. Watch this. So you lie about what God told you. God told you that the actual what happened. Yes, God. See? Real talk. Okay. Man, time be flying. Okay. The another part of the protection is when they, the first one is they'll try to protect others. Well, also they'll try to protect themselves. When the lying spirit will tell you to protect others, if somebody molests you, you try to protect that person. The person hurts you in church. You don't want everybody to know that the pastor been taking the money. See, a whole lot of stuff. One of the, one of the reasons why it's always been hard for me, because God has always let me see truth as a child. I see it. So it's hard for me to go along with the game. The devil tricked me in my need to want to be loved because I didn't know who I was. Once I knew who I was, my tongue got it loose. He tied my tongue down when I didn't know who I was because I became silent even though I saw it. I didn't say it because I, I needed to be loved. Once God healed me, good to see you, brother. Alfie, man, love you so much. Once God freed me from the need of people's love, when I realized who I was, my tongue got loose. That's when I became dangerous to institutions because I could tell you the truth. Not only can I tell you the truth, God raised me up to handle the truth. God wouldn't let me get away from truth. I was raised up in it. I told you my stepfather struggled with homosexuality. I was raised up in a house where a guy was Michael by day, Michelle by night. I had to deal with the truth. I had to face the truth that even though he's wonderful in the daytime, make breakfast for us, oh man, he hugs us, he loves us, come here y'all, love y'all, and then at night he fully dressed, fully dragged, I mean fully woman, I had to deal with that. Now do you love him? I had to deal with my stepfather who had his struggles, but he was a wonderful guy, he loving you more than your natural father is, you got to deal with the truth. The truth is that people have different personalities. People get internal struggles. And you can't, you can't look for the same side and don't love the unsaved side. You got to deal with the person. You got to love them. They're good and they're bad. That's the truth. They have ups and downs. They are bitter and sweet. That's the truth. I was forced to deal with that. I was forced to deal with that with things that my mother did. I got all kind of stuff. People come to me as kids and say, do you know your mama do this? Do you know your mama do that? Do you know your mama do this? I was faced with it, but that was mama. The same person that took me to church and told me about the Bible was the same person that was bringing all kind of men in through at the night. I didn't never know when I was going to wake up in the morning who was going to be in the bedroom. I, didn't, I never knew. Real talk. So I was faced, but I can't stop loving mama. See, I got to love mama. And so a lot of times we can't be connected because you let the issue become an issue. That's still mama. 
Mama got some issues. Daddy got some issues. Robin got some issues. But the connection, I can't miss out on my medicine because I can't handle what I'm seeing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I have to be able to handle. And God been trying to get you to embrace truth, but you don't want to handle what you see. So you act like you don't see what you see in church. You act like you don't see what you see in your daughter. You act like you don't see what you see in your daddy. But you better be able to handle it because you can't connect to what you won't face. Oh, I'm preaching today. Okay? Real talk. Real talk. All right? So people try to protect their expectations. Instead of having love, I love you. I love you. Sometimes you're wonderful, sometimes you're stubborn. I love you. God loves you. Regardless, I love you. I know you're uprising and you're down city. If you make your bed in hell, Job, I love you. You got to know that. Watch this. A lot of times when, you, when a person is trying to protect, watch this. Lying comes in two forms. You protect people or you protect yourself in lying. It believes in the protection plan. Lion believes in the protection plan. I can work with any ministry because I can handle truth. I can handle it. If you're a preacher and you're on crack cocaine right now, I can handle that what you spoke was God, but what you live in is the devil. I can handle it. And I can show you how to get free from the devil and still be able to preach the word of God. Because you got a calling on your life before you was in your mother's womb, before you ever picked up crack cocaine. You were chosen. I can't let crack cocaine tell me you're not chosen. I got to believe God's word over your issues. The question is, are you going to walk in the fulfillment of what you've been chosen to do? Or are you going to deny your rights? Are you going to be a rich man but die as a beggar because you don't know your rights and how to activate them? See, I can help you with that. Because I've been connected to you to happen. God let me go through some things so I can realize it. Because if God can use me in my crazy ways, don't tell me God can't use you. Ooh, see? When I'm honest with my, with my lying and my pride and my ego, I can be honest with yours and I can show you how to get free. Because I had that same problem. I had that same prison guard. I had those same voices. I had those same triggers. See? Real talk, real talk. Watch this. So, so what happens is when a person is protecting themselves, and 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 the person may say to you, "Well, why could?" And you say, "Well, I didn't want it. I didn't want to tell you what I did because I didn't want it to hurt your feelings." Now, what happens is the person on the receiving end. You got to give me time on this teaching, right? This is so important, so we're not gonna rush this. Okay, so the person on the receiving end, they'll start. This is what the this is what the voices tell them. So you thought I was that weak? See, if my wife lies to me and she said, I don't want to tell you the truth because I don't want to hurt your feelings. The first thing I hear is what? You think I'm too weak? I can't handle the truth? See, because it works on both ends. On my end, I want you to be able to feel that I'm strong enough and I love you enough that you should be able to. And so I will, I will interpret you hiding and protecting your, your lie. Watch this. As if you think I'm weak. But I got to be honest. Maybe she saw some weakness in my expression. See? In my expression. Or maybe she's justifying so that she can remain hidden in that because she's embarrassed. She's ashamed of what she did. And so she'll bring up that I'm weak, but it's not that I'm weak. It's that she ashamed. But she has to find something wrong with me to justify why she can't be true to herself and to me. See, it works on both ways. And so when you're dealing with the spirit of lying, you have to definitely have this, the right atmosphere. You're definitely the right worship because the enemy goes back and forth on both individual so that this secret place can never be revealed. And not only this secret place, because it's really bigger than hiding this, than, than revealing the secret. What the devil really don't want you to know is what that atmosphere of love feels like. He don't never want you to know, wow, when we're honest, I feel closer to her. She, I, I, I know she loves me now. See, because once you expose that, the devil don't have anything in hand. Cause, cause, cause I can't, I won't hurt her cause she, cause she loved me already. And so when I tell her, matter of fact, when I share with her what I'm going through, she gonna get closer. 
She going to show me more love. She going to really put it on me because she want me to know I'm not by myself. He don't want me to know what that feel. The devil don't want you to know what a safe family feels like, what a safe environment feels like. He don't want you to know what love that covers a multitude of fall really feels like. It's bigger than knowing, okay, I did it. I stole the donut. No, I did it. No, it's bigger than that. It's the level of intimacy that, that he don't want you to experience. Woo! <laughs> it's the oneness he don't want you to experience. So the devil is fighting against the atmosphere of complete brotherhood. That I, can, I got, for the first time, I got undressed. And I don't feel naked. The devil don't want me to be undressed and I'm not ashamed about it. He don't want me to be undressed and I don't have any guilt. He don't want me to tell my story and I don't have to cry. It was a great thing that happened to me. It brought me to a place to understand God. I really know what God is as a lover of my soul. I really know what it means for God to cover you. I really know what it means to be forgiven. He don't want me to know it without any any perversion, any lace of anything in the room with it. Woo! You're getting free today. I'm telling you. And for the first time, you're going to be able to tell it. And you're not going to be ashamed. And watch how people get free when you tell it. When you tell it with so much confidence. And when you, you know what? It's like you show it, taking off your shirt. You show your mark. And, and you show this mark. And then you show this mark. And the people that you're talking to, they got marks too. But they didn't know that, 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 that they love you. They admire you. And when you start saying your marks, they start saying, what? You got one too? Well, let me show you, man. And then I got a brother, Brother Farm Bill. He'll come on sometime. You know, and we had a little mark on our arm. You know, sometimes you have the skin grow out. And so I remember being on his house. We was doing a tour. We coming out, had my T-shirt on. And he see my little mark. He said, hey, we brothers, man. I got one of them too. See? He was no longer ashamed. He was no longer embarrassed. Because he see Apostle Jenkins, who I love, who I admire. Guess what? He ain't perfect. He got some problems too. He got some insecurities too. But we working on it together. He said, hey, man, we brothers. There's a movie uh, called, uh, uh, what's that movie? Oh, uh, what is that movie? Danny Glover uh, and, and the white guy, the, the Mel, Mel Gibson. What's that series? They got like four of them. Help me out, somebody. It's Danny Glover and it's uh, Mel Gibson. They, they police officers. And, and Mel Gibson, he played a crazy guy. And I forgot what it's on. Somebody, somebody put it up on the screen. And, and they got like one, two, three, four of them. I'm going to wait for somebody to tell me who it is. It's, it's, it's Danny Glover, the black guy. And the white guy is uh, Mel Gibson. And they're police officers. Come on. Come on, somebody. Help me out. My wife Legal thinking weapon. of me. Legal weapon. Come on, baby. Talk to me. There you go. <laughs> Help me. Okay, lethal weapon. Oh, if you look if, if you look at lethal weapon, mm -hmm. the number three, before you know he meets the white lady and he married her, right? Well, she's you know, she she's in the police department too. She's higher than him. Well, they do this one case together on lethal weapon three. And so they're in the room and he start he she he started talking about his scars he got in battle. And then she started showing her scars. And then he showed his scars. And then she showed her scars. And before you know it, they end up getting married because the level of intimacy come through the exposure of what they've been through. When we can talk about that I was struggling with, with lying, you were struggling with depression, I was struggling with insecurities, you were struggling with doubt, all of a sudden our brotherhood is stronger because what? We got some wounds that we can, we can understand. We got some wounds that show us how we are connected. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost, see? And so when you're dealing with somebody that's a lying spirit, you got to create an atmosphere that you pull down the expectations. Let me show you. Why you think? Why you think when Jesus rose, he rose in a glorified body, but he left something that did not reflect the glorified body. The whole body was glorified except for the nail prints in his hands. Why would you change into a glorified body that they can't touch you, but then when it comes to Thomas, you tell him to touch you? After you rose again, because I got to leave some marks you can identify with for you to come to another level of your belief. 
Oh, and so even though his whole body had been glorified, he left the marks for a reason to testify, for a reason to be touched. He said, unless you touch, and Thomas said, unless I touch you, where you've been wounded, where you've been wounded, we got to touch the person where they have been lying. We got to touch them where they've been talked about, where they had to hide, they had to protect, but I can touch me there because I got some wounds here. Woo! See, real talk. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Okay, okay, man, you got to stay with me today. We just, we just get to the beginning. And so you got to make sure that you don't let them telling you the truth make you go in defense when they need to release what they're going through. They need to tell you the truth. They need, they don't want, they want to stop lying. They want to stop hiding. They want somebody. They'll tell you most people who die, criminals, they want to confess before they die. They want to tell the family that I did it because people want to be free from the bondage of their sins. The bondage, we criticize people, but somebody want to tell you, I'm tired of drinking and preaching. I'm tired of taking pills and prophesying. Somebody wants to tell you, I'm tired of lying to cover because y'all think my husband is so wonderful, but he's such abusive. Somebody wants to tell it. I'm tired of covering up for the praise team, covering up for mama, covering up for dad. Somebody wants to be free from the misery to come with the lying. But, but can you handle the truth when they tell you? Can you not leave the church, walk away from the church, cut them off, shut them down? Can you say it's okay? I'm glad that you feel comfortable enough to tell me, but you're still somebody. You're still precious. God still want to use you. you still been chosen. We're going to work through this together. We're going to get to this because I, I lied too. I used to lie too. Matter of fact, when you told about your lie, it helped me be honest with mine. I, I thought I was helping you, but you helped me when you told me how you still lie. I couldn't be that honest as you could. You helping me become more honest when you became more honest. Oh, we preaching right now. Oh, we preaching right now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move on to the second part. If they don't lie out of that, they'll lie. Watch this. When a person is trying to protect themselves. Thank you for coming on. Edmonds, God bless you. When, good to see you, Mr. Brian. When a person is lying, to protect themselves, a lot of times, this is why they lie. We're not saying what they do is right. We're dealing with why so we can get them to what they're called to be. You have to understand it in order to unlock it. You have to understand it. The Bible says, know your adversary. We don't know enough about the devil to get people free from it. We always say, loose the devil, loose the devil. You don't even know how the devil got him in bondage. You can't unloose something when you don't know the combination to the lock. You must understand it. You got to understand these things that's trying to come against. That's why I titled it The Enemies of Divine Connection. Because you with the right person. You just don't know how to unlock them. You, the person that you need, you ain't got to go out of town to get them. You live with them. They're in your neighborhood. They're in your city. They're on your job. You just don't know how to see. You don't know how to see the diamond past the dirt. Woo! If you can see the diamond past the dirt, you will let the dirt intimidate you. Lying in that but intimidating spirit that don't want you to see him or her. That's all it is. Okay, watch this. Another reason why people lie is because they try to protect themselves because they're driven by the fear of judgment. The reason why I say that saints do the most lying out of anybody I know is because the church is the most judgmental, critical, self-righteous people that I know. I've never seen so many self-righteous, judgmental people as the saints of God. They want to be saints, but they ain't. They ain't because they judgmental. God is a God of love. He loves because love sees your original value regardless of what you're doing. And so a lot of times we got lies in church because there's not enough love in the house. We're judgmental. We're judge them. Judge them. Judge them on what they got on the ear. You tripping on the earring. You can't stand your husband, but you telling me he, he wearing them earrings. Well, mama, you don't even like daddy. What you talking about an earring? That's the least of our problem. What's on your ears? They got tattoos on their body. You've been marked. You got a tattoo too. It's called the tattoo of bitterness. You're bitter. You're bitter. You're bitter. You got a big 
tattoo bird all over your face, all over your body, but you can't see that tattoo. Yeah, bitterness marked you. Depression has marked you. You've been marked. That's what a tattoo is. It's a mark. You've been marked by failure in your own mind, but you don't want to deal with that. You're judgmental. You want to judge them because they got tattoos, because they got earrings, or you to, because they got no pants. You want to judge them because they don't come to church as much as you do. You're religious. That's why you come to church. If you miss church, you miss God. Oh, here we go. Watch this. So you judge middle. We judge. Because you then you have the nerves to see somebody come in church. They have some feminine ways. You don't meet them. You don't ask them for their phone number. You don't love them. But you're going to call them sissies from the pulpit. You're out of order and you may end up in hell yourself. That's judgmental. You don't spend time with the young man. You don't know what he's been through. You're going to call her gay and call her names. This is crazy coming from the pulpit. When we all were sinners saved by grace. We all was on our way to hell. Right? I'd rather you're straight straight or gay. If you ain't saved, you're going to hell. You must be born again. Where is the love for them? Where is the love for the people who may have children out of wedlock? There she go again. She got another baby. Got another baby. Well, 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 well. How many babies have you given birth to? Oh, you don't want to talk about that because you aborted them. You aborted the babies so you don't look as bad as the person who have them. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Or you aborted them in the spiritual. All this stuff. Judgmental. No love. No compassion. No real understanding. We're judgmental. So why would I tell you the truth when you judge me and don't even know me? You don't even know me. You judge me. You use the pulpit as a bully. All you do is bully behind their pulpit because if we was in the world, I would have knocked you out for saying some stuff like that. See, we don't like this kind of talk. This is real preacher right now. You done got cut. You done got knocked down. But you behind the pulpit with your elbow. So you think you have the right to say what you want to say. No, 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 no. And so now we, we, we tell people what well, they need to learn to be honest. Well, why would I be honest when you're not real? Why would I be honest when you're not real? We want to be right than be real. Be real first before you get right because ain't nobody right but Jesus. So you got to get real. But you want people to be honest when you're not real, pastor. You can't beat up people. Church is so condemning, self-righteous, judgmental. You, and, you, and then you lie behind words like, I deserve it. You ain't deserve nothing. You saw something with your natural eyes and now you say that's God. That's the Holy Ghost. That ain't the Holy Ghost. Y'all talked about me all night. Night, Saturday night, you got a phone call that I was pregnant. My mama told you. My daddy let you know when y'all went out at the, at the men's meeting. And now you're going to use the pulpit to preach about me and say it's God. The devil is a liar. This is crazy. And so then you want me to be honest? You want me to be delivered? When you're not even being real, you're judgmental. And so then we say, well, they need to stop lying. You need to stop lying on God, lying on the Holy Ghost, lying on church, lying on the move of the Spirit, lying on the altar call, lying on the organist, lying on oil. You need to stop lying. Let's all get down on our knees and let everybody repent. Uh-oh. Here we go. See? Because they feel judgment. And if I feel like you're going to judge me and you don't know me, you ain't going to walk me through it. You ain't going to put, you ain't going to get no investment. You ain't going to put your money where your mouth is. You ain't going to walk with me. You ain't going to take me to the hospital. You ain't going to call me. You ain't going to visit me. But you're talking about I'm lying. You don't understand the, the, what I got to go through, the nightmares that I have. You don't understand the struggle. There are many people sitting at the bar want to be right. You don't understand the fight they're going through. Everybody doing wrong don't want to do wrong. They're trying to get loose. It's a stronghold on their life. You know all this Bible verse, but you can't set me free. Woo! Oh, see, see, see that fear of judgment. That's one thing. Man, I'm going to have to... Pick up on this again next week. Watch this. They fear judgment. They fear the loss of respect. You say, why they lie so much? I'm going to tell you why people lie. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying we can't connect because we on the receiving end ain't doing our part to create an atmosphere of love and truth that will allow them to tell the truth. Your daughter can't talk to you. Every time she talk to you, you make her feel this small. Your son can't talk to your daddy. You always make him feel dumb and insignificant. And then you say he lied because he can't talk to you. The atmosphere of truth has never been created. Never been created. Never been created. Woo! So they fear judgment. They fear the loss of respect. I want to be able to tell you what I'm going through. 
and you don't lose what God has revealed to you. I remember one time I was preaching and it was powerful. It was anointed just like it is right now. And I had one of them clip earrings on. In the middle of the anointing, I clipped that earring on my ear. And you should have seen the Holy Ghost ran out the building. Zoom, the whole place shut down. All the amens didn't come to no man. All everything went quiet like, no, he ain't preaching with that earring. And I and I'm still preaching. I said, I'm still anointed. God is still in the building. But because you have a God called earring, you can't worship the God because your idol showed up. That's the truth of the matter. And because you've seen your idol, now you can't worship God. And that's us, see? That's us. I says, you can't handle. So if you found out, you would say, my pastor need to tell the truth. If your pastor told you that the reason why you enjoyed that message so much, because every time he smoke a joint on the way to church, his mind just opened up. Ooh, you can't handle that. You can't handle that. You smoke a joint on the way to church and you enjoy service, but he can't. We not saying smoking the joint is right. We said, can we deal with the level of bondage that visit us? And can you still not let the flesh identify the person? No, no man by the flesh. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. I'm going with God. And if God tell me you're a man of God and I see something out of order, I'm about to get the devil off of you because I know what God said. You ain't by yourself. God didn't show that to me because he's a gossiper. He showed me your proclivities so I can join in the battle. Listen, listen, that's a man of God. And here come the devil trying to get him high. The devil trying to mess him up. The devil trying to mess her up. I see her because I know she's a woman of God. I know he's a man of God. That's what you do. Uh oh. That's what you do. And you love him to the point that he can come and tell you, sister, I want you to know something. I've been struggling. I used to get high and I don't know how to how to operate without getting high. I know God don't want me to. Can you pray that I stop doing this? I'm tired of getting high. And all of a sudden, he can confide in you because your love has created a room for truth and love to allow him to be free. Woo! Oh, we preaching today. Oh, yeah. But we lose respect when we find out. We lose respect. And so you know what happens when you lose respect? You know what people do? They learn how to become a better, a better hider. All you're doing is teaching people how to make. You know how they're making these masses right now? Everybody making these masses. They're making some good ones. Well, we learn how to make a mass in church. The last time I told y'all about my problem and all y'all left, nobody prayed for me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a mass you ain't going to know. I'm going to know how to shout over this mess. I'm going to know how to speak in tongues. I'm going to know how to prophesy. I'm going to learn how to lie. I'm a, I got so much makeup on you, I don't even know who I am. I'm cosmetic. I'm made up but not made over. I know it. And we are teaching people how to make masses, how to, how to make a mass because can't nobody handle the truth. The church got to be perfect now. The church, everything got to be in order. Nobody telling the truth. Everybody acting like they saved and sanctified. Everybody acting like I treat my husband wonderful. Oh, my kids are just great. The home is so dysfunctional. But the mass, the mass, we know how to, we are high polished, well oiled machine. Oh, the, the, we come to the altar. Altar call. I've never seen so many churches with a clean altar call. No blood nowhere. No sacrifice nowhere. We don't see no sweat nowhere. That altar call is clean. We can eat at the altar call. You know the altar call is one of the most dirtiest places in the room because they had blood from animals. All kind of stuff. But all altar calls are clean because ain't nobody confessing. Ain't nobody telling the truth. Ain't nobody crying. Ain't nobody weeping. Ain't nobody saying, oh, wretched man is me. Ain't about the honest oh I gotta stop because we're afraid you'll lose respect if I tell you the truth I might not get that money if I tell you what I'm really going through you ain't gonna give a big offer so let me lie let me tell you I've been living right ever since I've been saved thank you Jesus I'm saved sanctified filled with the precious Holy Ghost because I gotta get that money from you I can't tell you I'm messed up I can't tell you I don't like my wife. I don't know how it's going to work. I can't tell you I'm hurting. I got to make you feel like, hey, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. That ain't how you feel. That ain't how you feel. That ain't how you feel. You're lying. You're hiding. You're building a cave. You're not telling the truth. You're, you're learning how to lie better. 
Loud with a shout. Loud with a tongue. Woo! Because <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to lose respect. I'm afraid that if you see it, you no longer see the man of God. I'm afraid that if you see my nakedness, you'll change my name and strip me of my title. So let me lie. So I can keep a false respect that you really never had for me in the first place because you never saw me. Sometimes we lie because we, we're afraid that we're going to the loss of love. If I tell her the truth, she won't love me. I told a little lie and she didn't talk to me for three days. Well, I guess I, the big lie never come out. If the little lie shut her down for three days, the big lie ain't going to never come out. So we ain't never really connected because I can't tell her the big lie. I said S-H right now. If I cuss right now, if I cuss, if I say the little word S-H-I-T, Y'all a trip. Some of y'all say he up there cussing. Now you watched cussing all night last night. Everything you watched on TV was cussing. And you love comedians. You love Dave Chappelle. He cuss. You love Kevin Hart. He cuss. Oh, you love these movies. They cuss. But if I say S-H-I-T, Apostle Jenkins was up there cussing. You cuss. You cuss every day. You say the M word, the B word, all the words. You got made up words. See? See? So, so, cause, so, what I, should I cuss? I'm not saying I should cuss. I'm saying, can I be honest with my struggle with my brother? Do I have to lie in order to have respect? Woo! Loss of love. People walking away because they never loved you in the first place. Love doesn't move when it sees a problem. It moves closer. When love sees a problem, it doesn't move away. It moves closer. When a doctor sees a problem, he automatically, his gifts is activated by the problem he saw. When you have a real love from God, the problems in people activate your purpose. You just identified to me that you were called to be blessed by my gift. Yes, God. The last one. Then I'll stop here. We'll pick it up Monday. Lying will cause you to be driven by the fear of punishment. Now, this is another one that we've been trained to. We train our kids to lie. Well, we told them, don't nobody touch them cookies. We come home, three of them cookies is gone. We say, tell me the truth. I just want to know. I just want to know who took them cookies. That's what we say. Here come your little boy. Mama, it was me. I'm sorry. Get in there. Take off your clothes. I'm going to beat the bus out of you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Now, he, you know what you told him? He learned that truth gets you a whooping. I ain't telling the truth no more. The last time I told the truth, Mama beat the mess out of me. And guess what? Mama didn't beat me for selling them three cookies. Mama beat me because daddy left her three years ago and she trying to feed five kids by herself. And so when I take three cookies, it make her feel like we're not going to have enough for the other kids. It's because that's daddy because your daddy left us. So mama beat me for 30 minutes over three cookies. This wasn't about three cookies. This is about I'm trying to raise y'all by myself. He left me. He wasn't there for me. That's what you're really doing. Uh-oh, that's what you're really doing. So truth gets you beat. Yes, Lord. My mother beat us half to death with stitching cords. That couldn't be about not making up the bed. That whooping we just got couldn't have been about not fluffing the pillow. That, no. See? So we trained them. Almost cried right there. See that? We train them. So I've been raised to fear the punishment of truth. When truth was designed to set me free, now truth gets me killed. Because we don't know how to use the atmosphere of truth for the right reason. For the right reason. See? I'm afraid. Some folks won't gonna come to God because we didn't scare them. 
The average person don't love God. They're scared of God. Because we've been, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. Stop all this hell preaching. Stop it. God preached love. He never preached hell. He preached love. Mm -hmm. He preached the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sowing. We're sowing where we're going. And you're right. You're right. Not listening can cost you, but it should cost you understanding. When your child don't listen, you should deal with the spirit that they are being led by. See? Mm -hmm. You're not to control your children into obedience. You are to teach them the revelation of obedience. Love always have your best interest. When I say don't touch the stove, that's because I don't want you to lose your life. That's not about me having control because I'm mama. Most of us don't even know how to be a mama because we were never taught the proper ways of how to be a mama. Our mindset is to control our kids. Not to raise them up to be a citizen in the kingdom. The whole purpose of being a citizen is having understanding. So I need to have an understanding. If you ask the average parent, why do they have to make up their bed? You got bad with your old child. Like that. Why we got to make the bed up, mama? You know the first thing you say? Because I said so. Because you don't know. Because you was told to make up the bed. You was never told why it's important to make up the bed. You don't know why. You'll say, well, you, they, they, here you come. You'll start name calling. Because you're lazy. They're not lazy because they're trying to figure out what's the sense behind it. If I'm getting back in it anyway, we're not going in the room. Tell me the real reason why you're making the bed. Only reason you tell me to make up the bed because your mama told you to make up the bed. And your mama mama told her to make up the bed. And nobody ever understanding that it should be a teaching mechanism of order, of completing what you start you in, alpha and omega. So if you got in it and it was in order, well, you always leave something in the order you got into it. And so that's the reason why you make it up is to show a completion of the task. You're not sleeping anymore so the bed should be prepared for the next level of sleeping. And so that's why. And if you know how to finish this, you'll finish your homework. And if you finish your homework, you'll finish your order changing the car. And if you finish that, you'll finish your education. But if you don't understand order and you never finish anything in life, you won't finish anything because you didn't start with your bed. But because we don't know this stuff, you want to control it because you don't know. And so now you say you're not listening. Mama, you're not making sense. You're being led by a tradition. See, what if our lifestyle and our time schedule doesn't permit making up a bed when you get out of it? Mama, do you love me any different? If I don't make up the bed, have I noticed that you have more favor in my brother who makes up his bed than me who don't make up the bed? I notice that you only can love a person when they do what you say. Is this a test that God is trying to reveal to you that you are biased in your love? Maybe the lesson ain't for your son, it's for you. You only can love people who do what you say. Ooh, we don't like this kind of preaching. See? But we don't know. So we beat them. Punishment. The greatest punishment you can give your child is understanding. And it's again, and my wife talked about this. The Bible says spirit not the rod. The rod is the word of God. The rod, the rod is not a tree that you whooping your kids with. Stitching cords, ironing boards. The rod is the word of God. He's a rod and staff. It comforts me. The rod. That rod is, I walk through the valley and shout out death. I fear evil. For that rod and that staff comforts me. We have used the rod as a beating punishment mechanism. So now the children feel like I got to perform to get your love. And when I don't perform right, your love is not released. Can lying be hereditary? It can be hereditary through culture. Through culture, through culture, see, and, and so, and through uh, association, there are things, and I'll get to that, uh, there are things that your children see in your, 
in the father, in the testicles of a man, not to go too deep, but the testicles, the reason why he has two, it means to testify. And so whatever a man is doing in his life, those things inside of that is testifying. And so that's why sometimes our son has never been around his dad, never knew his dad, but he lied just like his dad because he saw his dad lie in the seed form of the testicle. It, it testifies to the nature. And so it testifies. That's why it's called hereditary. It's been, it's been passed down through the blood lineage, but the blood has a voice. When the first time we see blood in the Bible, and God says, I hear the blood of Abel crying out in the wilderness. So the blood have a voice. So a lot of times what you carry in your blood carries to the next generation because they hear it through the blood. Okay? So, so to a point that's yes. Okay? You have to deal with that. If lying is in a certain family and the whole family lie, I guarantee you it's because they're all around that. That's a bloodline. Like the same thing with sugar diabetes can come through the blood. Same thing with high blood pressure can come through the blood. There's all kinds of diseases that can come through the blood. So the blood, life is in the blood. And so things that you deal with in life is in the blood. See? So whole family go through that. Musicians could be in the blood. So you say, do your family play? Everybody in my family play music. See? So, yep, and I don't and I don't like to say generational curses, which we're saying the same thing. I like to say generational consciousness because it's the consciousness of man that God breathed the man, man became a living soul. Because the curses was broken by Christ, but even Christ is a consciousness. If you're not putting on the mind of Christ, then the old consciousness is still working through the bloodline. This is why a baby, if you don't train him up right, he'll start lying too. Because it's in the bloodline. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is manipulation the same thing as control? Manipulation deals with more of, of, of I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say in the purest form, it's the same thing as lying, but it is control. It's in the same family. That's why I, I, I didn't get a chance to get to the pride part. That's why I say we're dealing with lying and pride because pride will make you lie to have control. People lie to have control. And so because of lying, it will cause you to manipulate people because you're not going to tell them. Like if one of the things I talked about yesterday is people lie because they got to look good. And so I'm going to manipulate you so I can look good. I got to be the greatest. I got to be the smartest. See what I'm saying? And so there's something that I'm lying with in my private conversations that make me manipulate you. Something has told me I'm not wonderful, so I gotta manipulate you to believe I'm wonderful. I have to manipulate you. And so there's a lie that I'm believing, that's it, Holy Ghost. There's a lie that I'm believing from the voices that make me manipulate other people. Because you don't have to manipulate people. God has people that will support you, that will be with you, that will stand with you. But you manipulate them because you're believing a lie. And believing a lie, you take the control to make it happen. By any means necessary, this is going to be done. So a lot of times, lying comes from, I'm going to get what I want. And so because you're going to get what you want, that's the lie that you believe you have to get what you want, take what you want. So now you start manipulating from the lie that you believe. Because a lot of times, see, Eve believed the lie. She believed the lie against God. But it revealed the knowledge of good and evil. There was some truth in that. See? But the lie was, you shall not surely die. That was the lie. You shall not surely die. He, he, he layered it with the truth. Your eyes shall be open. And he got her focusing on what she was getting more than what she was losing. See? So it, 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 it gets deep. Father, I thank you for this teaching today. You have given us a lot today. I can hear the Holy Ghost wrestling with us in our minds and bringing up scenarios and bringing up different things to reveal to us where we have allowed this spirit to have activity. God, give us the love and the passion and to be courageous enough to embrace truth so that we can have a real connection with your people, a real connection with our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. And we can do things out of understanding. You said if it costs you all, get an understanding. We didn't understand. But now, God, we're starting to understand the importance of the Holy Ghost. So you said, when he come, he shall be a comforter, paraclete, walk with us, and he shall lead us and guide us into all truth. Yes, God. So we thank you, Lord, for the truth that we're receiving. Thank you, Lord. We will no longer be controlling the line and, and separate from our brothers and our sisters and our husbands and our wives because we're afraid that we might be punished. We might be judged. We might lose love. We might lose respect. We might not get what we want. 
Do we not even know we already have what we need? We thank you, Lord, for this lesson. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name for the level of awareness and how you love us enough that you wake us up yes, to the truth. The first thing you told us to put on in the arm of God was the loins of truth. It's the first piece of armor is truth. Truth. Let us be able to embrace truth. Yes, it's what sets us free. Thank you, Lord. You see the people that's crying didn't want to be free from that nightmare of that, of that day that happened, from the nightmare of their actions, the devil trying to kill them with guilt and shame, embarrassment. You know what it is to try to preach over it, shout over it, do motherhood, do fatherhood over it. You know what it is. Yes, Thank us, Lord, that you come to set us free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You, if you have not given and you want to give and God lay on your heart, please do that. The, the cash app is up. The PayPal is up. Whatever God lay on your heart, give it. We're sowing where we're going. God is preparing us. God is enlarging Divine Insight Ministries territory. There's a great things that's going to be raised up in your city that's going to be tied to this ministry. There are things in you that we're going to sow into. And so whenever you sow into this ministry, you allow us to do the kingdom work that God called us to do. And so money is the currency of the earth. And so we understand faith is the currency of heaven. And so we understand as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. The Bible says, well, who give you spiritual? You should give him carnal. Don't muzzle the ox that treads out the cord. So if yeah, God yeah. has touched you to be a giving to this ministry, to allow us to be effective in the kingdom as we've been called to be by your support. We thank you for all that you do and how you do it. In every aspect. And if you can't give financially, give as God has given you to give. Whatever God has given you to sow, he gives seeds to the sower. Okay? So if that's love, if that's patience, if that's a smile, if that's a share button, if that's an invite, wherever you are. Never make the devil feel like you don't have anything to give. All you have to give is what is left. They gave Christ two fish and five loaves of bread. Even though they had a $5,000 burden, Jesus allowed everybody to be full. When you give God what is left, he'll give you what is enough. When you give God what is left, he'll give you what is enough. Or he'll give you more than enough. Thank you for giving. We're so are we going. We love you. God bless you. And uh, we'll do a part 10. Got a lot more to talk about, okay? Part 10, Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good time. Walk in peace. Walk in God's favor, not in fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And we thank God for it, okay? A sound mind. We can have a sound mind even in the midst of Corona. Because God has given us power, love, and a sound man. I love you, Sister Tara. We love everybody. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. Walk in God's favor.